If you need pitch perfect videos, here are 12 rules you need to follow to get professional audio in Final Cut Pro. Bad sound can ruin a great video. A Hollywood movie with home video sounds will bomb at the box office and leave your audience moving on to a different video. In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you 12 simple rules for getting perfect sound in your videos every time using Final Cut Pro. Whether you're Spielberg or brand new to video editing, these tips will boost the sound quality of your videos and make your dialogue, voiceovers, music, and sound effects resonate with your viewers. Stick around until the end and I'll show you a sneaky trick for making your sound effects move around your head like you're there in real life. Okay, rule number one, record with some headphones. You'll be able to hear better, you'll be able to isolate any problems, and it will stop you from being distracted and allowing you to focus on your edit. I'm gonna use these AirPods because they're more comfortable in my large ears. Rule number two, loop playback. In Final Cut Pro, click on View, Playback, and then select Loop Playback or press Command L. Select the clip you wanna loop and press forward slash. Now as that loops, I can really concentrate and focus on a certain section of the audio. All right, rule number three, use the built-in tools Final Cut Pro has. The first one is audio meter. You can see it right here in the middle of Final Cut Pro. And let's play something back. And you can see the levels moving up and down. To make it bigger, just click on it and it will pop it up over here on the right hand side. Okay, green means you're good to go. Yellow means, hey, hold on, be careful here. And red means, what the heck are you doing? It's too loud. <laughs> These numbers are decibels right here. The higher the number, the louder it is. Do your best to never go above zero or touch zero. Stay below zero. Experts differ on the numbers, but a good rule of thumb is to keep your overall mix somewhere around negative 10 to negative 14 decibels. Dialogue should be somewhere around negative 12 to negative 15. Background music should be lower around negative 18 to negative 22. And sound effects should be somewhere between negative 10 and negative 20 with some occasional spikes up to around negative eight. You can also make audio adjustments in the audio inspector. Select your clip and open up the inspector by clicking on the inspector button. You can tell you're in the audio inspector by this blue speaker icon. In the audio inspector, you can change things like volume, you can enhance audio, you can change the pan mode, and you can apply effects, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. You also can adjust the volume of a clip right in the timeline. You'll notice in this clip that some of the waveforms are yellow and red. That means they're too loud, that they're either touching zero or they've gone above zero. So let's turn this down a little bit so that we don't have any peaking. I can click and drag on this horizontal line to change the volume. If I hold down command while I click and drag, I can change the volume one decibel at a time. If I press control minus, I can go down a decibel one at a time, or control plus will go up a decibel at a time. That looks pretty good there. You can also do quick fade in and outs. There's these little circles on every audio clip on the left and right side. If you hover over them, you get two arrows, one pointing left and one pointing right. Click and drag those in to create a fade, and the same for the fade out. You can right click on one and select a different fade curve. Here's what it sounds like with the fades turned on. Music fades in, and then it fades out. Okay, now let's work on some dialogue and voiceover. Here's a clip from a previous tutorial I did. Let's play it back. Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. All right, there's a couple things I noticed. First, in the waveform, I see some red right here, and we can also see in the audio meter that we peaked. We went over zero. We have some red there. Click on the red to reset it and let's fix this. Press R to bring up the selection tool and draw a selection around that peak. Now hover over the audio line and while holding down command, click and drag down to reduce the volume of just this section. We'll try at a negative four. Select the clip and press forward slash to replay it. Seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. 
All right, that looked good. We don't have any red in the waveform and we didn't have any red or peaking in the audio meter. Moving on to rule number four, let's remove sounds that we typically don't make and we typically can't hear. Go to the effects browser and go to the EQ section. Drag and drop a channel EQ onto your clip. Open the EQ window. We wanna remove some low and high frequencies. So click this filter on the left and then drag and move this circle over to about the 100 mark. That's gonna take out a lot of these low frequencies that we just don't make with our voice or that we hear. Let's also do it for the high frequencies. Click on this filter on the right hand side and then drag and drop this pink circle over to right about the 10,000 mark. Next, I want to sweep the frequencies and find any strange or whistling sounds. Click and drag up on this circle and then narrow the band. And then while the clip is playing back, we'll drag it left and right, listening for any strange or whistling sounds. Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. Okay, I've got some sounds, strange sounds happening right there, kind of in between one and 2000, some whistling sounds. We're going to subtract that out. And that's what we're doing here. This is called a subtractive EQ. We're subtracting some frequencies. So just click and drag down with that frequency. Now that will be taken out. And just repeat this for any other strange whistling sounds you might hear. All right, rule number five, turn up the quiet parts. We'll use a compressor to do that. Go to levels and then drag and drop compressor onto your clip. Open the compressor window and set threshold to somewhere between negative 18 and 20. Ratio is usually somewhere between two and five. I'm gonna try about three. Makeup is used if you have a really loud clip or a soft clip to adjust it. Mine's actually a little bit loud, and so I'm gonna bring that down to about a negative two and a half. Leave knee at one and set attack around five. Set release to somewhere between five and 15. And what we're looking for are consistent levels in the waveform. We don't wanna see any big spikes or any low dips. This looks pretty good. Rule number six, remove ambient and room noise with noise gate. Noise gate is found in the levels. Drag and drop it onto your clip. And like always, open the noise gate window. Set threshold to around negative 40. Leave reduction to negative 100. Set attack and hold to 40. You can double click on a value and enter it as well. And then set release to around 400. This will target parts of the video where you're not talking. Rule number seven, enrich the human voice. We'll do that with an additive EQ. So go back to the EQ section and add channel EQ. Open the EQ window and turn on analyzer. Go ahead and play it back. And while it plays back, you can see the different frequencies that are in this signal. We wanna boost the frequencies in this area between one and 200 and also down here, five to 10,000. Click and drag this yellow circle over to the right and then up to boost the 100 to 200 range. And then for these frequencies, click and drag up on this purple circle. Don't go too high, just a little bit. All right, rule number eight, fix any clipping or distorted audio signals. We'll do that with an adaptive limiter, which is found under levels. Drag and drop the adaptive limiter onto your clip and you guessed it, open the window, choose soft limiter, and then play back the clip. What we're looking for is get, to get the output around negative three. It looks pretty good. It's hanging out right around negative three, but it's a little bit high at one point and actually goes to zero. So I'm gonna pull the gain down to about two. So here's the sound clip without any of the effects. Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. And here it is with all the effects turned on. Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. Sounds pretty good. If your voice is all warmed up and this video has been helpful, will you please give it a like so others can see these sweet sound editing tips? Thanks. Next, I'll show you how to duck the background music during a voiceover. All right, rule number nine, save time. It would take forever if I were to apply all these effects and change all those parameters to every single clip in my project. There's gotta be a faster way. 
And there is. Select your clip that you just put all the effects on and then go to File, select Save Audio Effects Preset or click on Save Effects Preset at the bottom of the inspector. Give your preset a name and select the category you want to save it in. Since this is for voiceover and dialogue, I'll save it in the voice category. Down here, I'll select what attributes I want to save. I want to save all those effects, but I don't want to save these volume changes because they might not apply to the new clip I put it on. So I'll uncheck that one. Then I'll press save. Now, if I scroll down to voice here and uh, move down, scroll down, here it is, Dylan Dialog. Now I can drag and drop that right on another clip. And if we select it and look in the inspector, we have all those effects in there set up, ready to go. That saves a ton of time. Okay, rule number 10, don't drown out with music. Have you ever watched a video that has music so loud you can't hear the person or what they're saying and it's frustrating? Don't do that to your videos. I'll show you how. I have some clips here at the beginning and I don't have any dialogue, I just have music. So my music is the main sounds, but I also wanna make sure I take care of those levels. Let's play it back. You can see it's hitting zero nonstop. We need to turn this down just a little bit. While that's playing, I'll press Control minus. Let's try that. That looks pretty good, we're not hitting zero anymore. But what do you do if you have dialogue with music? Here's that clip I was working on before, but now I have some music below it. Let's listen, what does it sound like? Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago. I can barely hear myself, right? It's just too much. But I want the music to be kind of loud. I want that to be part of the video. So what can I do? There's a couple things. The first thing you can do is take out the competing frequencies in the song. So go to EQ and add a channel EQ to your song. In the EQ, we're gonna do like we did before. We're gonna subtract some frequencies. The human voice is typically in this area right here that I'm hovering over. Click and drag that center circle down to pull out some of those frequencies. I'll do it while it's playing so you can hear the difference. Big difference. I can hear my voice come through better because we don't have these competing frequencies and I can still hear the music. However, there are times where the music is just too loud and it needs to drop. And that brings us to rule number 11, ducking. In Final Cut, press R to activate the range selection tool and select the area of your song you want to turn down. Then hold down Command while clicking and dragging down on the audio line. Go down to about negative 15. Let's play that back. Here are seven things I wish I knew five years ago about editing pictures in Final Cut Pro. That sounds really good. I can hear myself really well, but I can also hear the music in the background. It's like the music is bowing out and saying, take it away, Dylan. All right, our last rule, number 12, in your head sound effects. So I've got this little scene of a police officer and I've added some sound effects. Let's take a listen. All right, so I've got a helicopter, I have police chatter, and a police motorcycle and siren. The first thing I wanna do is adjust the levels. The helicopter's way too loud, so I'll select that and press Control minus to bring that down. I wanna make it sound like it's up in the air far away from me. Let's try a negative 10. Police chatter, I think, is fine. We're right next to the police officer, so I can imagine his uh, walkie-talkie, or whatever they call him, his comm device is going and so we would hear that better. The siren is too loud as well. We can see that right here, that it actually peaks, and if we look over here at our meter, we see it peaked as well. So let's select that and bring that down a couple, probably about to there. All right, next, I wanna do some surround sound stuff. I want the helicopter to sound like it's flying up over my head. So I'll select that helicopter clip, and in the audio inspector, I'll set pan mode to basic surround. The circle in the middle is like our head, okay? So, and all these sounds are around us. 
so if i want the helicopter to fly over my head from left to right i would move it over here to the left so all the sound is on my left and i'll go back to the beginning i'll set a keyframe and then i'll move to the end and i'll move this over here to the right so now that's going to animate from left to right like it's flying overhead i want to do something similar to the motorcycle so select the motorcycle clip go to the beginning and change pan mode to basic surround. I want the motorcycle to sound like it's up in front of me and then it goes around. I want it to start out here and then go behind me. So we'll set a keyframe right there. I'm gonna move forward a little bit and I'm gonna put the sounds more up here to my, up in front of me and to my right. Then I'll move to the end and I'll have it come behind me and maybe even swing around to the left side a little bit. Okay. Let's play that back. You really should put on headphones for this part for the best experience. Oh, I got goosebumps. It was like I was right there in the middle of the action. Now you're a sound editing master. Congrats. Have you ever recorded a video only to find echoes in it? If so, you might want to check out this video my friend Chris made called How to Remove Echo in Final Cut Pro. Click here to check it out.